All right, guys, we're going to be having some fun today with the Air Force Air Guns Texan SS. We're going to shoot a 405 grain pill here into some sodas just for fun to get the party started. Let's do it. And we're going to see what happens. All righty. Here we go. Whoa. <laughs> so that was an air gun with 405 uh, foot pounds of energy. Uh, going down range in those sodas, and I don't know if we actually caught our bullet. We might check that out in a second. I think it went all the way through. Uh, but guys, welcome back. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888, and uh, this is a, a newer gun from Air Force, and uh, it is a killer, killer air rifle. I've been shooting it a good bit. I really enjoy it, and this is a Texan SS. It is an integrally uh, moderated uh, big bore 45 caliber air rifle, so it's very similar to the original Texan. There are some minor differences. Uh, we'll kind of discuss as we go along. We are gonna shoot the gun a little bit more and play around with it some. Uh, we have collected a good bit of data and we've got some specs on the gun we'll kind of share throughout the video. I'll tell you what though, first, those were 405 grains and it really put the smack down on those bottles up close. That was a whole row of uh, two liter sodas. And uh, we've actually gotten some hunting data back from people uh, on the Texan SS and it's done a really good job on pigs and coyotes and things like that. And uh, Texas actually recently uh, legalized uh, air gun hunting for deer, so that's gonna be fun. I may have to get out to Texas at some point and go uh, deer hunting with one of these. All right, so we're gonna go out to 50 yards and let's just see how that 405 uh, imparts a little bit of uh, connect, uh, kinetic mayhem here. All right. That was a 405. Let's go down to a 265 semi wad cutter and see how it uh, how it hits that soda there. Oh yeah. All right, one more. Not bad. Nice. That did hit just slightly high. Let me bring my point of aim down just a scotch. That was a nice solid hit. All right, we've got a coyote target down there, a shoot steel uh, gong. It's a coyote. Let's see if we can get a headshot on our coyote down there. That's a, that's a yote on the ground. Let's see if we can shoot one more time here. There we go. That's a coyote on the ground. All right, now a gopher, not a real gopher, a steel gopher. He's our arch nemesis, if you will. Nice. So inside of 50 yards, I mean, this thing is really accurate, does a great job. Uh, we've been shooting it a good bit. One more shot on the uh, gopher there. All right, right over the top of his head. That was my fault. Um, I'm actually firing this uh, particular air rifle off the bottle. That way we don't have to stop and refill quite so much. But we are going to talk a little bit about velocity and accuracy. Um, there are some differences between the SS and the normal Texan. Uh, the, the Texan was really the first air rifle that I came into contact with as an air gun guy. And it's what really uh, you know, made me love these air guns so much because the big bore power, you can't really dispute the fact that with the normal Texan, you've got about 500 foot pounds of energy going down range, which uh, is no slouch, okay? I mean, we're talking an air gun that's capable of taking big game. We're talking deer sized game, which is a, is a really cool thing. The SS, you get about 400 foot pounds of energy out of a 405. So you do have a little bit less foot pounds of energy due to the uh, modified twist and the shorter barrel uh, that is on this particular air rifle. So it's a shorter package, um, which is nice in terms of the barrel length. The moderator does a great job. We did a uh, sound meter, the normal Texan against uh, the Texan SS, and I do have some meter data. Okay, so at the muzzle, the normal Texan provided 149.7 uh, dB. At the ear, 144.1 dB. The Texan SS, and now that's out of a 30-inch barrel. The Texan SS with its 24-inch barrel we got 137.1 uh, decibels at the muzzle, and we got 133.6 decibels at the ear, which means that the Texan SS is hearing safe and that the Texan SS 
is comparable to roughly a 45 ACP pistol fired with a suppressor on it. So that's really cool. You're, you're getting a nice quiet sound. And the cool thing about air gun hunting, and you know, I do a good bit of air gun hunting. What I love so much about air rifles is that when you're shooting at animals, especially coyotes and foxes and bobcats and critters like that, that are really smart and in tune with the sound of a gunshot, they, they almost don't associate the sound of an air rifle with danger quite like they would a gunshot. And it's strange. I mean, and then you, you sort of, you sort of like add that to the fact that you've got a moderated air gun and it just doesn't click in their mind that they're being fired at by something that's potentially dangerous to them or whatever. So it really helps with hunting predators, which is really fun and everything like that. And uh, if, if you've never hunted with an air rifle, it really is addictive. It's a lot of fun. And it's something that uh, I'm looking very forward to, you know, going deer hunting uh, with this particular air gun. Um, the optic we've got on this is a two and a half to 10 by 56 Trigicon. So it's just pretty much a hunting rifle style, you know, just basically hunting rifle optic that we've got on this. Uh, and it's sitting in, obviously Air Force makes these Picatinny uh, rail adapters uh, that fit on the existing 3 8 uh, dovetail slot that's on top of the receiver. All right, so we're gonna talk about a little bit of data here and guys, I'm gonna try to, you know, make things roll along. I'm gonna try to be quick, but we did collect a good bit of data uh, with the Texan SS. And in that data, we fired everything from 143 caliber round, or 143 grain uh, round balls all the way up to 405s. The, the ideal bullet weight for this particular Texan is about a 250 grain projectile. So that's one major uh, area where this particular Texan is, uh, differs from the first generation of Texans, the, the non-moderated version, is that the other Texans really favor a little bit heavier bullet because you got that extra barrel length and you can get some really good foot pounds of energy with a good heavy bullet and you get a fair amount of shots out of the standard Texan. So we would never want to take anything away from what the other Texan is capable of doing. But because of the shorter barrel, uh, you do have some minor limitations which we'll kind of discuss. So we're considering like kind of like hunting accuracy and hunting velocities for uh, this to be, I would say probably around three shots that you're gonna get on a fill. Okay, so the onboard tank, you fill up to 3,000 PSI. It is a pre-charged pneumatic uh, air rifle. And uh, so we're going to talk about the 143 uh, grain round ball. Um, so we got about 10 shots yielding anywhere from 932 to 756 feet per second in terms of velocity. So over a 10-shot range, you're starting out for the first five shots around uh, 932 to 849 for your first five shots. Your first three shots... Uh, with the round ball, we achieved a one and a half inch group at 50 yards. That's excellent. So at the first three shot velocity, uh, you're talking about 276 foot pounds of energy, which is still plenty of energy to take down a fox or a coyote, or bobcat or anything like that, okay? Get up into the 265 grain semi wad cutter bullet. First three shots, again, inch and a half group at 50 yards, which is great. Your first uh, five shots at a 3,000 PSI fill, fill yielded between uh, 762 and getting down to 664 feet per second. Uh, within you know those those next two shots after the first three, uh, they'll hit just a little bit lower and they'll be just a little bit lower power. But within those first three shots, you're talking 342 foot pounds of energy. So that's a good amount of energy going down range. And guys, remember. Some of you guys are casters out there. If you're casting bullets and things like that, you know, you can get your own bullet molds and you can get anything that's suitable for a 4570. And as long as it's within the, the, the 458 diameter range and within the weight range that's specified, you can order a mold and throw all the bullets you want and have almost an infinite supply of your own bullets if you need to, which is handy. Getting up into a 350 grain. Now the 350 grain, in my opinion, I kind of feel like the 350 is a nice sweet spot, although they really recommend a 250 in this gun for longevity in terms of a fill in a hunting situation. I really uh, prefer to shoot heavier bullets out of a gun like this, especially in a hunting situation. The first three shots out of a 350 grain yielded about a three inch group at 50 yards. And after that, tailing off into the five shots on the fill, on a 3000 PSI fill, you got uh, 698 feet per second getting down to 606. So still pretty consistent velocity uh, even in the first five shots, which is nice. And you're getting uh, 379 foot-pounds of energy. 
I think that's a nice happy medium for hunting purposes. All right, and getting up into the 405. 405, same thing. First three shots, two inch group, not bad at all. And again, 401 foot pounds of uh, energy. So guys, I know there's a lot of data points here, but I know that a lot of air gun people are like really data uh, intensive in terms of what they want to see in terms of data. But uh, that's pretty much the main data points on the, uh, on the gun itself. I mean, these things are so much fun to shoot. Uh, I tell you what, let's set up one more thing, pop something at close range, have a little fun, and then we might stack some rounds in at about 100 yards. Earlier, uh, with proper holds, I was getting some really nice groups uh, out to 100 yards with the 265. So let's do that, have a little bit of fun. All right, guys, before we go out to 100, we're just going to have some fun with some apples here. You know, they say a apple a day keeps the doctor away. I'm not sure about that, but they sure are fun to shoot. All right, these are 265s, uh, semi-wad cutters. We're relatively close, but it's always fun to see apples come apart. So here we go. <laughs> that has some sound to it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that bullet went through the apple and went down range and shattered a cinder block 50 yards away. That was cool. Dude, <laughs> the sound. All right, one more. Yeah, that's how we slice apples. That's fun. All right, we're going to shoot out to 100 yards on some steel, see if we can shoot some groups. Uh, since we're shooting off the bottle, we should get some really good consistency. So this isn't really like a measure of what the gun will do on a standard fill. But let's shoot, you know, I don't know, five or six shots or, you know, several shots and just stack a bunch in at 100 yards once we have our hold and just kind of see what she can do. So uh, let's go for it. All right, guys, again, we're going to be shooting off the bottle. And right now the bottle, uh, in terms of the gauge that's on the tank here, is showing about uh, 2,800 PSI. And we're going to go ahead and just try to shoot a string in at 100 and see what kind of accuracy we can get. Um, no pressure. See what I did there? Uh-huh. Make sure y'all are paying attention, you know, you got you to deal with my cornball jokes, okay, if you're this far. All right. I'm going to hold a little high. I think it's going to drop in. Try to find me a consistent point of aim here and just lob a few rounds in. Oh, wow. That one hit a little higher than I expected, so it went right over the top of the uh, plate. That's fine. I'll bring my point of aim down just to scotch. I should be able to aim at the bolt on the plate. That bolt is about maybe the top of that bolt's about half an inch, maybe three quarters tops. All right, cool. It's on the bottom of the gong, but let's just see what we're talking here. Hopefully I won't screw this up, guys. Triggers on these things are great. I mean, that's, that's a pretty standard uh, thing with these Texans triggers are wonderful. Nice two stage. All right, let's see if she settles in here. Of course, I get the camera running and the gun doesn't shoot the way I want it to. Hopefully, I don't screw this up. There we go. Yeah, let's see if we can uh, keep that going there. Got a little bit of a point of aim going. Yeah, buddy. Those three are just about on top of each other. I'd say maybe a three quarter of an inch group. That's not bad. Um, the gun's pretty much about as capable of, of the accuracy as you are as a shooter. So it'll shoot just about as good as you can. Um, definitely more than capable of uh, providing good hunting accuracy. Yeah, buddy. That is what I'm talking about right there. That's clover leafing. <clears throat> All right, one more shot here. All right, well, dummy me, I must have pulled that one low because we are on the bottom of the gong. All right, let's see. Uh, I've got a D28 there on the right. 
Let's see if we can maybe land one right on the dome of that, uh, the head of that target just for fun. Let's see. Oh, just right off the side of his noggin. All right, well, see, because this thing is so quiet, he didn't know that I missed, so that means I get to try again. All right. <laughs> well, <laughs> that one hit the bolt. That was a little lower than I wanted it to go, but it's still right in there. One more shot. <laughs> All right, I lied. One more shot. It's eluding me. <laughs> I went too far to the left. What is wrong with me? <laughs> All right. Tell you what, I've got a couple of round balls right here. At least I, I lied, I think I do. Yeah, some round balls here. It's one thing we haven't really done in this video yet is shoot round balls. So let's see, uh, let's see how a round ball lobs in there. A little bit of fun here. I have no idea where this is going, but I'm going to try it. Wow. Now that round ball actually shot pretty flat. It just kind of lobbed right in there. It didn't really drop that much. I guess the lighter weight. Let me bring my point of aim down a little bit. I went right over the top of his head. Well, okay, I was aiming at the bolt with the round ball, and the round ball hit the bolt dead on at 100 yards. <laughs> well, that's cool. I don't know what kind of energy it's got by the time it gets there, but it's fun. Let's see. I don't know that the way that sounded I, I don't think I'd want to be standing there to find out what uh what that feels like nice not too shabby Considering what the round balls are doing at 50 and what all these other uh, rounds are doing at 50, it's not shooting too terrible. Could be me. Let's see. Yeah, I had to have pulled that one. I kind of watched that one fly over a bit. Yeah, it's starting to open up a bit. Very cool. Um, guys, we're going to look at doing one more thing. Let's have a little bit more fun. So we shot some sodas. We shot some apples. Let's, let's come up with something else neat to do. All right, guys, I'm going to admit, one of my guilty pleasures is making fire. Oh, yeah, this is going to be fun. All right, these are 405 grain bullets. Let's see what, what happens here on a little, little spray paint concoction. Oh, nice. Okay. <laughs> I felt the heat from here. <laughs> All right, one more. Actually, two more. Oh, that came apart nicely. All right. <laughs> it never gets old. <laughs> you can't ask for better fun than that. <laughs> Guys, uh, thanks for watching today's video. We had a ton of fun shooting this SS here today. Uh, these are wonderful air rifles. One of my favorite air rifles for sure. Um, I love the Texans. I like big bore stuff. And that you just can't dispute uh, launching a big old pill down range and just uh, having a bunch of fun behind one of these guns. And uh, I love predator hunting with these particular uh, air rifles. And uh, hopefully, I, I think what we're going to probably end up doing, it might take me a minute, but I might get back down there with Rick Ward and uh, do a little bit of predator hunting and we'll try to throw together another video and uh, get out and do some predator hunting and see what the uh, SS can do against some uh, coyotes and stuff. So, guys, thank you for watching today's video. We appreciate every single one of you. Uh, all of you guys that support us on Patreon, those of you that purchase man cans, if you pick up shirts over on Forge from Freedom, uh, all of those things. You know, those of you that comment 
and subscribe to the channel. Those of you that email in ideas for us, guys, all of that stuff is graciously appreciated, and you guys are uh, very uh, pivotal to the way that we run our channel. So thanks for watching today's video. We'll see you next time.